Okay, so I what I wanted to go over here, it's been a while since I've been able to actually sit down and, and kind of go over some things that, um, that I went over before, but just wanted to dig in just a little bit more. And uh, also since it's already been some time. So one of the things here that I want to show you here is here is um, a overhead summary report that I created. Um, at the top here, you put your uh, company name, right? A simple input, date. Now, this is the part here I want to really show you here. Uh, now, the good thing about a overhead report is that it's basically going to tell you what sales you need to go after per month. Um, um, based on what's inputted. So, and that sales amount need to be actually in, in the bank for you to be able to pay each line item that's listed here. Okay, so let's go through it here. Now, all this cost here is, um, it's all indirect cost. Now you see it here, it says direct cost. Um, it's direct cost for overhead. But it's but we call in the industry we call it indirect costs. Um, uh, it means that it's not directly charged to the job. So it's uh it's an indirect charge for each project. Okay, so this indirect cost goes into our overhead costs, and a little bit of each of these line items get charged to every project. And to cover this, we need to make sure we uh, get that right percentage that we need to charge for every project. Also, too, while 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 um, um, while I'm doing this, you will also notice once we get down to uh, uh, to uh, the sales portion, it's a projected amount until you have record of year over year sales per month you don't really know what you're going to be doing next month in sales. So you kind of have to have an educated guess uh, on that number. So um, and you'll see once we get down here, I'll explain a little bit more in depth once we get down there. But the first here is uh, rent. Say you have an office space, right? Uh, most of us not doing 2,500 a month, maybe it's uh, 1,600 a month, okay? Maybe it's 1,200 a month. Right, you've got an office space. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe you're just using your your home, and you want to just say, "Hey, out of my home, it'd be four hundred dollars." Okay. Now, remember, this is a monthly charge. Okay, vehicle payment. Um, maybe you want to include your vehicle payment here on this uh, as an overhead, especially as a small business. Uh, you need somewhere to carry that cost. Some, something needs to pay for that vehicle cost, especially if you're using it for, the, uh, for your business on a daily basis. Um, um, okay. Truck maintenance. Okay. Now, um, sometimes the truck maintenance costs, sometimes even a vehicle payment cost can actually be charged to the job. Uh, you can actually incorporate uh, um, uh, uh, a daily fee or hourly fee, you can break down it down to an hourly fee and charge that hourly fee to each job. Okay. Now you should be charging that even if you do put a portion of maybe only vehicle payments, you know, but you should be charging for every vehicle or, or, or for your vehicle on every job. Okay, and a standard rate to charge for your vehicles is anywhere from 11 to 13 bucks um, an hour. Okay, and then you got to understand when you're doing a vehicle charge on your estimate, not on the, uh, the overhead sheet that we're doing, but on your estimate, you want to do vehicle port to port. Okay, so um, you may be working eight hours on a job, but it may take you an hour to get there, an hour to get back. And that vehicle, even though your hours are eight hours on that job that you're paying yourself for, but it's 10 hours for that actual vehicle. Okay. Uh, next thing. So truck maintenance, since we are small and tiny, we got truck maintenance here. Uh, we got an office phone. 
okay? So you may have, uh, you know, uh, uh, voice over IP, um, uh, phone at home or, 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 or at the office, um, but we put $40 in there. Uh, QuickBooks, QuickBooks Online is uh, about 70, 76 bucks, 77 bucks. You got a cell phone here for 45. You got insurance here for 600. Let's lower that down to, let's say 45. Um, now we just plug in some numbers here so we can get down to the percentage that, that that's gonna uh, tell us the number that we need to apply to every project, okay? Uh, uh, this is general liability and workers comp. We did at 250 a month. Uh, office supplies, we did at 40 bucks a month. Uh, toll roll, uh, we did at 100 bucks a month. Once again, this toll roll, you actually can apply that per job. Um, now, if you are paying tolls because the, the area that you're in, then you can incorporate that within your overhead somehow, uh, especially if there's an average cost or you pay a some type of a subscription. Um, you can actually include it in your overhead. But if it's just, you know, uh, you are running into toll calls, for a particular project, then you can actually add that cost for that project and not in your overhead. So you wanna avoid adding extra costs in your overhead. Let's go ahead and put that at zero. Uh, credit check, um, we can go ahead and put that at zero. Um, now, what are some other items that we can add into this overhead report that goes there, right? Um, we can add, let's see here, vehicle. Oh, you know, another thing is that we spend money on is uh, uh, safety, right? Um, uh, safety like hard hats, vests, right? Glasses, kind of put a budget there to always um, you know, invest in those things there. So that's for the go there too. Let's put 50 bucks a month in there. Uh, and then you need to calculate what that monthly amount is for you. You need to know what you're spending on each of these items. These right now, I just plug these numbers in here, kind of wrote that in there. So you write in, you see it's more lines here for you to fill in uh, if you have more items to to include okay so next one here if we jump down here line 35 you see we got payroll with labor burden okay this we're not talking about how to calculate labor burden i've done videos on labor burden check out those videos so you can understand how to calculate your labor burden per employee uh, so here we're just going to say say salary employee tyrone jones and Okay, so as a small business owner, you know what the minimum amount that you need to bring in per month, right? Everyone should know what is the minimum amount you need to bring in. So we're just gonna say, go ahead and plug in 6,000. Now, mind you, that's 6,000 that's gonna be taxed, okay? Um, so anyway, so we got 6,000, so I wanna, I wanna try to bring home 6,000 every month, okay? All right, so if you look here, it shows uh, line 43 here. It shows my total operating margin uh, every month. I need to come up with seven seventy five hundred bucks, seven thousand five hundred every month. Okay. All right. So uh, my sales. Now here you see here. Uh, you know I do these with uh, different companies. So different companies have different divisions that produce different sales. So you can have different departments or different divisions within your company uh, that does sales. Maybe you got, con uh, uh, maybe you do construction and then out of that construction you do uh, equipment rentals. Maybe you do traffic control as a different division. Maybe you do uh, labor services at a different division. Each of those, each of those divisions will have a sales number. Okay, so right now we're just gonna focus on one, the construction services, right? So we got 75,000, now it's 75,000 per month. Okay, now let's look where that puts us here. So it puts our, if you look here, for the first quarter over here percentage is at 10%. 10% is pretty good, okay? Um, I have been as high as 18%, okay? Um, you wanna, especially, you know, being small and not doing a high volume, you definitely wanna stay around the 13% range, 
okay? So since we're such a low number um, and we don't mind getting up to 13%, and maybe that 75,000 is just a little bit too much for us to get. Now, um, so let's lower it down to 50,000. What does that do for us, okay? So 50,000, right, lower, uh, brings up our overhead to 15%. Now, now, now here, this is what I want to show you here. Um, I know sometimes you, well, you may have noticed that when you're with a company, right, and things slow down, right, things slow down, work is not as much anymore, and they start cutting people on the overhead. Right, they start cutting people. Well, this is why. This is an example why. When your sales go down, it shows you here your overhead goes up. So let's just do this. Let's say we did 150, right? Say we did 150,000, right? So our sales is down to 5%, right? And we're still using the 7,500 that we need to come up with. So, so our, our, um, overhead percentage is down to 5%. So let's say we slow down, right? We slow down and we're only able to do 50,000 a month, right? Then we're like, uh-oh, our overhead jumps up to 15%. So the lower your sales are, the higher your overhead is, okay? The higher your sales are, as long as you don't increase overhead line items, then the, uh, the lower your overhead percentage will be. Okay, and that's how that works. That's why when things slow down, uh, people become top heavy with their overhead numbers and they start letting people go within the office or within that, or, or anyone that's covered within overhead. Okay, so now let's look at this here. So let's say we, we go for 60,000, right? Right, now uh, 60,000. Now it's more like a sweet spot right there. So 12.5. Now, 60,000. Now, you have to ask yourself, how do I do 60,000 in a month where I can actually have that money in the bank? Not someone owing you, not an invoice that you're going to write up. That money is actually in the bank. So you need to figure out how to actually secure that 60,000. That, that, that means that you may, not, you may not have the luxury anymore to be working one job at a time. You need to figure out how to expand and do maybe two or three jobs at a time, maybe three $20,000 job, $20, jobs at a time, okay? So you can meet this number because guess what? If you don't meet this $60,000 number, then that means that you're not making enough to be able to pay your expenses on overhead and also you, which you included that six grand here, to pay yourself. So if you don't make that six, that 60,000, and let's say you only do 15,000 or 10,000, then yeah, you, you, you're not going to be able to pay yourself that month. And if you do pay yourself, then you're actually taking that money out of something else that, that it should be paid towards. And this is where we find ourselves in trouble is when we start uh, using money that's allocated for other line items, that's allocated for other things because we have not made them enough for that month. But also too, um, it just goes back to what I've always been saying. If we're not, sometimes we're not making enough because we don't even do the numbers like this to know what we need to make. Okay, so you have to sit down and do the numbers. You have to sit down and figure out what is the overhead percentage? You know, what is my labor burden? Uh, um, what is, uh, what profit percentage do I charge for this project, right? Um, and, and then why am I charging this profit percentage for this project? Not because I think I'm gonna get over, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna win, it should be based on something, you know, like risk. You know, what is the risk for this job? Uh, that should be uh, determining what percentage you're charging for profit. But this is um, a, a quick way I want to show you how to calculate your overhead percentage, how to figure that out. And then now that 12.5, right? That 12.5 is something you add to every project. Okay, now as a small business, because we have no year over year uh, um, uh, 
records, right? We don't know uh, because we're small and maybe we haven't been keeping keeping up the books. We don't know what we did last year, January at this time. We're not sure what we did last year, January, uh, the year before that. So we don't we 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 don't have anything where we can see any scale or we can determine if we're going up or down. Right. So you have to remember that because we don't have that for February, we need to guess what we're going to do. It needs to be an educated guess what February projections are going to be. Now, let's say now you sit down in January, you say 60,000 and you don't do 60,000. Then February, you need to sit down and be a little bit more honest and kind of dig down and get to the bone a little bit more and say, hey, you know what, what am I going to actually do? So if you say, hey, you know what, I'm actually going to commit to only 20,000, right? Well, if you jump down to 20,000, then that, that raises up your, uh, your overhead percentage to 37.5. There's no way you're going to get any jobs charging just 37.5 in overhead. You're already going to have probably maybe 25% in labor burden, another at least 25% in profit, and then now you're jumping up your overhead to 30, 30, uh, 37, five. No, that's no way. So uh, to bring that down, a lot of the line items above, maybe we just make 4,000 a month. Even though we need six, we're gonna bring down four. Now, what does that bring, bring it down to? 2750, see, still not working. You're gonna have to start getting rid of some of this stuff here. Okay, maybe, maybe, uh, Maybe uh, maybe get rid of the office. But you see now, look what we're getting to. And this is why uh, uh, people cut uh, 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 the labor force because a lot of these items up here, where is the rent, the vehicle payments, the truck maintenance, you can't make that stuff go away. So um, uh, you have more heads here now where there's uh, salary employees and you just start letting go people that uh, are carried under this overhead, you know? Uh, maybe the uh, the payroll girl and someone else handles payroll now. You you double up with someone else's tax. Um, but you gotta understand that whatever sales number you put here, um, you need to hit that mark. And that's just it. You need to hit that mark, okay? All right, so let me tell you where you can find this. Uh, I am putting this on my website for sale. Um, I gave it out for probably three to five plus years. Uh, it will be on my website for sale, uh, probably going to sell for about 10 bucks. Uh, you'll be able to utilize it forever once you purchase it. And um, if you're looking to, 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 to kind of figure out where you need to be at, make sure you go to my website, uh, go ahead and purchase this and uh, give us a call let us know how it's working out for you and if you have any questions on what to actually enter we can help you out with that so i hope you enjoyed this remember my construction entrepreneurs hustle hard then hustle harder catch you on the next one